welcome to Anime Kiwi Special Number Five. This week we watched Jinro: The Wolf Brigade, uh, written by the creator of last week's wonderful, wonderful movie, Mamoru 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 Uishi. Why can't I say Japanese stuff right now? <laughs> Mamoru Oishi. There we go. Fourth try is a charm. You got Cut it. all that out. Cut all that out. Good boy. First try. Yep. Professional podcaster. Japanese major. Saying Japanese words. Well, I'm a professional. A professional podcaster? Yeah. I mean, everybody's a professional something. I'm a professional idiot. That's my job. You're taking my job. That's what, that's what these people outside America do. They take our jobs right into battle. Oh, man. Anyway, we watched Jinro. It was good. Yep. Eh. I don't know how much Wait, you I have to say about it. You didn't like it? It's fine. I like the animation a lot. The animation was really nice and is interesting. Yeah, I, I quite like the animation. Um, it's it's kind of hard to describe, like the style of the animation. And uh, I was trying to put my finger on it. Like, if you look at the way the characters are drawn, they don't typically have any real shading or anything, but they still seem to have like a good physical form to them. If that makes sense. It reminds me. Of, it's very 1990s. It reminds me of Satoshi Kon stuff a lot for some reason. Yeah, the same. It's kind of like a. I guess you'd call it like. Uh. It's not quite realism, but it's kind of in between. Yeah, it's it's more realism than yeah, it's, I a mean, lot of other stuff. They the the characters' movements and stuff were animated more, much more realistically than anime usually is. Yeah, it's, uh, some of the scenes almost look rotoscoped. Yeah, well, they might. Who knows? They might have been. I wouldn't be surprised if they were. Mm. Produ- yeah, probably. Pro- production IG likes doing fancy stuff sometimes. They're a top tier. Animation studio. Indeed. Uh, the music was good. Yeah, I mean, um, not much to say about it, but it, I kind of like the, um, the kind of fretless bass thing they had going on. Mm-hmm. Kind of has a bit of a groove to it, I guess. Um, it's a very, it's a very moody movie. It is. It's definitely. Written by the guy who wrote Angel's Egg. See, I, I had kind of a different impression of it. Uh, like, w- when the movie f- finished, like, the only thought that kept popping into my head was, like, Moose Flash, movie made about world's most boring man. Like, but he I just... kills people and is, like, a super soldier guy. Here, let it's me let boring. me do an impression of Fusei. Here's my impression of him. Pretty good, right? Yeah, it's spot on. It's just, I'm... oh man, like, when the movie was over, I was just like, I didn't really like it. Um, I mean, it's probably pretty obvious at this point, but... Yeah. I just felt like I got absolutely nothing out of it. I was like... What did any of this mean? What was the purpose? Like, I mean, I get, uh, I get that it's supposed to be like these, uh, like political infighting. It just wasn't really interesting in any way. And like, the writing of the script really bothered me too. Like, it kept reminding me of. Um, have either of you played through uh, the Phantom Pain at all, Metal Gear Solid yep. Five? I didn't pay attention to the story. Was there a story in that story's game? Great. The story's great. It really wasn't. It reminded me of the dialogue in Metal Gear Solid Five a bit. Like, so the movie's called, you know, Jinro the Wolf Brigade, and obviously the uh, the symbolism of the wolf is very important to the film. It's but really heavy handed. Like, yeah, it's super heavy handed, and it reminded me of like in Metal Gear Solid Five. Like, so the the title is the Phantom Pain. So like, half the dialogue in that game is like, you know, I'm in pain. But the thing is missing, so it's a phantom pain, and and everything and, you know, and they repeat on that one theme constantly and hammer you right in the in the head with it, 
And I kind of got that similar impression here. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't feeling the whole Red Riding Hood thing it had going through it. I mean, it's a, just a story about the nature of man. My problem is isn't less is is less with the you know the themes of the story and just more how it was executed like uh you know I have a real problem with the way that they characterized who was the person who was supposed like ostensibly supposed to be the protagonist like the dude just was a complete blank space nothing about him was interesting and half the time he's just sitting there with a blank expression not saying anything and I'm like who is this guy? Why do I care about what he's doing? Why does it matter that he's being double-crossed? Like, there's no dramatic arc to this character, and there's nothing to invest in. Yeah. No, I, don't, I, I really just don't have a lot to say about it. I mean, part of it is because it is part of the larger, you know, universe that the story takes place in. That it's more, I guess, filling out some information about the goings on in that world. But I don't know. I did I mean the whole like point of the story is that he's not really good with people and he's only really like he feels his place is, you know, on the battlefield killing people. Yeah, but then why does he hesitate to to kill people? Like if if the whole point is that you know He's supposed to be this wolf character who, you know, and he's he's violent and he doesn't belong with people and he can kill people with ease. Like, why is he? Why does it show him hesitating? Like, why does still, he hesitate at he's all? He's still a human being. That's the whole point of the story. Is that even if, you know, a man tries to be a beast, there's still parts of you that you know you can't just shut out your humanity. But the movie tries to make the opposite point that this main character isn't really they say human. is yeah he's supposed to be he's a beast and they repeat it constantly like I mean that was the where? whole point show of me, the show Red me Riding him Hood being thing a beast. repeating through the whole movie so is that yeah, he's the like wolf the movie, in the mother's clothing and the well, more, the movie doesn't show you him being beastly at all like ever it just just shows you him being like mildly autistic no it totally does it's like the whole point of that scene when he puts on the armor at the end of the movie, and I forget the guy's name, but he's like, you know, this is the real Fusei. Just yeah, silently but... walking down sewers, mowing everybody down. But they're it's, coming... it's it. Yeah, he's he's not, you know, good with people and everything, but he had to make the choice of whether or not to just get rid of that side of him. And go live with the girl forever and ever, or to just go all in and be the beast. And he decided to be the beast. But wouldn't it be cool if this character had like, a character talked? <laughs> it it would be real cool if, if if at one point he actually said something, and I could get a better sense for who this guy is. He's a remarkably flat character. Well, there's flat, and then there's blank space. Like, you know, if if you looked up the story bible for this movie, and under his character, there would be, just be nothing. Like, he's a soldier, I guess. That's about it. Presuming but, um, he doesn't show up again in some other thing, but it's no way of knowing that just from this movie. Yeah, I, I don't remember. I've I've seen a couple of the other movies, but I don't remember them very well. I don't. I didn't even remember this one very well because I thought at the end when I first originally started watching it i didn't realize or i shouldn't say i misremembered the end part because i thought he just just point blank shot her without a care in the world but i misremembered that and it would make better dramatic sense if he was the one to do it but the fact that well, he was you the know, one to do it but he was all freaked out about it no the, the guy in that shack is the one that did took the shot well the smoke the no. smoke came out of his gun of the of fusei's Oh, yeah. I must not have seen it. No, because the, the guy was about to shoot her, and then he was like, oh, I guess I don't have to, because Fusei did it. Well, that makes more sense, I guess. I kind of got the impression that uh, that he didn't for some reason. Maybe I'm just tired. <laughs> but, well, um, watching the movie again, though, it, it felt like a 
hour and a half episode of Ghost in the Shell. Sandalone Complex. Does Ghost in the Shell have a main character that's completely pointlessly boring as well? No, it doesn't. Ghost in the Shell has great characters. No, because cause that's what it's missing. Well, here here's why I thought that. Because it's like, in Ghost in the Shell, these kind of things happen. And there's always, like, the flat guy who just, you know, is the point of the episode. And then you have the Major and Bato usually standing on a rooftop watching it. And then making some comment about, wow, that's really fucked up. We shouldn't be like that. And I thought, if you had that one scene at the end of the movie, this could have been Ghost in the Shell. Just movie. Because it felt like that. I guess my main problem with the storytelling specifically is that, I mean, so if if you take away, like, the symbolism of the wolves and stuff, which you really should, because the movie beats you over the head with it, it's not even a question. I mean, I don't know about um, taking all of it out, but, like, you don't have to tell the Red Riding Hood story three times in the two hours of the movie. Exactly. Like, there's... It's it's like somebody uh like looked up the definition of subtext in a in a textbook once and then just sort of inferred what it meant, but um like my main problem with it is that the movie it like it's actually like properly about like as I said the kind of infighting in the government and them trying to uh you know shut down this special unit and for some reason and um i could i just never got the sense of like why does this special unit actually matter like well because they have like the final say so and basically unlimited power to do whatever they want in these situations and the police and everyone feel like all they do is mess things up and make things worse because you have a squad of heavily armed people with machine guns walking down corridors, just openly mowing everyone down, which doesn't make the police look very good. So is this movie so The Division? This movie is The Division, yes. <laughs> I, I just... I mean, uh, I, I get that, of course, um, because I saw the movie and my brain works, but I just... I didn't really get the sense that whatever the government w was doing, you know was really different from what this special unit was doing. Like, and, like, the the machinations with the jurisdictions and stuff like that, I just didn't care. Like, it, you know, especially in movies like this, the really important stuff is what the political uh, ramifications of something do to the characters. Like, how do they affect the characters in the world and how does it change them and, and, and how does it recontextualize what they've done in the film? And you get none of that here. Like, at all and things just sort of like if you take all the the stuff that happens in the film um you know it kind of ends with nothing really happening like what do you mean they resolve like all the conflicts of the movie yeah but the like conflict a bunch of people die the conflict resets the uh this world to zero is yeah, what i meant really didn't, like it, it starts doesn't. off it doesn't though well, you've got the the special unit being still active. You've got the uh, the civil unrest is still active. This main character is still a boring asshole who nobody cares about, and that's what I mean. Like the ramifications well, no, of everything. The the like the sub like plot of the movie is that the government wants to use, you know, more sneaky, underhanded, secret police sort of methods to combat everything. And the, you know, uh, Kuro Boros unit or whatever is basically like, no, it's better to just have some people who are just open face. We are the people who will stop this stuff. You don't need to hide in the shadows to do it and everything like that, because it's better for people to know, you know, the beast that's fighting them or whatever. I don't know. I... I liked it. I I it, it's not it's not deep. It's not like a uh, amazing political story. It's not this fantastic character piece. It's just a, it's a, it's a good little movie. Yeah, I mean, if I'd gotten anything out of the movie, I I might necessarily agree. It's just that 
I re- like especially with the, when it comes to movies like this, I I refer to like anchor points a lot. Like you have emotional anchor points, like and something to latch onto basically. And I just didn't really find anything in the movie. Like one of the things. Like, I've discussed that I've watched uh, the series Planet Test before. I don't know if either of you have seen it. Nope. Yeah, I've seen it. But uh, one of the things that uh, show does incredibly well is it takes, like, very nuanced looks at politics and stuff. But what the politics does is it affects the characters in usually quite interesting ways. So, like, you know... There might be a terrorism plot in the in the show or something like that, but it will show you how that terrorism directly affects the people that you already care about. And the show goes to great lengths to set up these characters at first and make you care about them before it starts bringing in the political stuff. And you know that that's that's really smart storytelling. But on the other hand, with this uh, movie, it's like front loaded p- politics and then gives you a character that you don't care about and doesn't they don't develop at all and i just felt like you know at the end of the movie like that this secret police is still operating like and that's what i meant by the the story had been reset to zero when everything was over like they're still operating they're still doing whatever they want uh nobody's lives are in any really different and like from a storytelling standpoint, I find that stuff just boring. It almost feels like it was doing world building for the sake of world building without it being like important in the world that it was trying to elaborate upon. Yeah, that that's that's a really good way of describing what I mean. Like it's world building but nothing else. And that um uh, what, what's the uh, the the woman's name in this movie? I'm real bad with names. I keep forgetting. I cannot cannot tell you. It's like fell fay fell something short. something like that with an F. Something uh, that annoyed me as well is that like w- why is she like falling for the main character? Like why is there a, this kind of? It was a setup. I think she knew him. She knew him all along, I think, which is why he couldn't shoot the girl that looked like her. Well, no, she was working with the secret police as an undercover operative to try to get him involved in the whole, you know, plot to discredit the, the, the not Wolf Brigade, but the, the normal, normal soldier guys. And she, through being an anime, falls in love with him because when you have two characters spending the majority of the movie together, that's what happens. Oh yeah, I I get that and everything, but I just, I guess like everything kind of comes back to my main point that the main main character is boring and never says anything. Like I just don't see a woman ever falling in love with somebody like that. Like, um, you know, romance plot for the sake of it, but still just don't care like you know it would have been more interesting if she'd never grown attached and and it actually was you know a ruse the whole time and um or it might not have been i don't know i'm not gonna write a better movie in my head but (laughs) like i would actually really like if if uh either of you since I mean, I guess Mikey doesn't seem super positive, but... I mean, like, I'd maybe not immediately, but I might watch it again in the future to see if maybe a second watch would do anything for me. Well, I'm I... trying to get a better sense for the movie because I came out of it not liking it, but, you know, thinking on something can change your mind, and I just... I really want to get a, get a sense for what the hell this movie actually means, and... Like people really seem to like it when I was looking around the internet. I mean, yeah. it's it's just a it's a, a humanity piece on, you know, about a human that sucks. It's 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 not even a it's not even really about him. Like if if you really get down to it, it's not it's not a character story. Like the character in characters in the story 
don't really matter. Like you, they could be interchanged with just about anybody because they're not really the focus of the movie. It's it's more what would happen to someone if they were in this position. And like, but, is it okay but, to just not, you know, forget your humanity or whatever and just, you know, revel in what you do? But don't you like, see how having a story based on that, you know, kind of needs to be a character piece? Like, if, but, if you tell a story about how this sort of political stuff affects somebody, like a what if sort of story, it kind of, it would kind of need to be a character piece because you want to see how this affects somebody. Especially it if it's being be, presented though. as, yes, part of a larger world, but it's being presented as its own standalone piece as well. Yeah, the story is very contained. So, like, if it was like a side, if it was like a a side movie or something, as part of like a, a larger series of d directly related stuff. Like this is Jinro Gaiden for the Jinro, Jinro Quintology. But well, I I hope uh, whatever movies take place after this aren't based around this same like Fusei character because he I don't sucks. Remember, I don't think so. Is the series more like anthology like or something? I want to say, yeah, well, I mean, there's just a bunch of movies and stuff. And there's radio I, I dramas there's and stuff, too. Yeah, you know, mangas and stuff, but yeah, it's mostly comics. just like... There's, it's mostly radio drama, from what I saw. Self-contained stories. Like, I don't think the other, like, the live-action one, I don't think that stars any of the same people. It's just in the same world. In the world itself, like, seems a little vague to me. I mean, there's room for either definitely room for interesting stories in the world i just feel like we didn't necessarily get one yeah i don't want it to to sound like i'm i'm shouting anybody down and saying they're wrong it's just that i i just didn't yeah like without repeating myself i just didn't get anything out of it at all and i kind of wish that i did i i just had no problem watching a movie that just goes into detail about this kind of stuff i mean i thought it was fine i don't i don't think it's like great but it's solid c plus movie maybe maybe b minus i don't know I'd, I'd rate it higher than that i i don't know i i i like that the story didn't just play out stereotypically with you know him renouncing being a violent guy and everything getting wrapped up in a neat bow tie because that's not realistic outcome like it was it's a it's a fairly realistic story like most soldiers aren't that interesting they're not expert poets and things like that they're just gonna be really boring people who are only good at one thing yeah i'd i'd kind of agree with that but like yeah, they're still people and my point is that the Fusei is the main character, just, you know, there's nothing there. So, like, the most character development you get out of him is that he mentions at one point that being in the the special group or whatever is, you know, it, where he feels like he belongs. And you don't really get anything else other than I mean, that. His character growth is questioning whether or not, you know, he should just follow orders and kill people who you know are women and children and by the end of it you know he decides that's okay yeah and, th and that could be dramatically interesting it's just that you know you get a couple of dream like sequences and stuff one that's kind of brutal and a bit messed up um and then you know nothing else really like it's supposed to try and give you the impression that the woman blowing herself up in front of him somewhat traumatized him and that he feels like he's going to make the same mistake again and, and kill this other woman. But like, if he wasn't such a blank space, that might be a bit more compelling. 
but you don't really get a sense for who he is. Like, you get a sense that maybe it's I, supposed I, to be... I, I think you get a perfect sense of who he is, because that is who he is. There's nothing more to him. Like, that's the whole point of his character, is that he is just a beast. He doesn't have a personal life. He doesn't have, you know, anything going on, and interacting with this woman is a new experience for him that ultimately doesn't fulfill the needs that he has as a person like it's it's a it's a very real story most real people aren't that interesting they're boring people like hey it's... hey i'm i'm interesting i'm interesting i'm super interesting i'm just gonna keep repeating it until i believe it yeah like i think i think that's why i like this movie is that it is just a very real movie in that the characters don't make a lot of good choices. They don't, you know, have great philosophical and theoretical understandings of the complex situations that they're in. They just do the best they can and it works out how it works out. There's a real kind of... Um... I'm just doing my job sort of feeling to the movie. Like, everybody's just doing what they're told. And, yeah, as you, as you just said, there's no real philosophical underpinnings to what they believe and stuff. They're just doing what they what their job is. And uh, I, I think that's kind of what makes it interesting because... I'm not saying it's do, not interesting. They do look at the situations that they're in. They just can't... Like, they don't have the you know philosophical groundings or whatever you want to call it to really wrap their heads around it so they just do the best they can and i, I thought that was interesting like it's Have, um... it's a very it's a very different kind of movie especially if you look at like the posters and everything of oh, a guy in super badass armor just mowing everybody down it's like it's it's not that movie but yeah, it's, and and I can um, kind of respect that. It is. Have either of you seen Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy at all? N nope. No. Well, that kind of shoots uh, what I was about to speak about, but I, I it kind of reminds me of that a bit because like the whole deal with Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy is that instead of being like a like a movie spy movie, if if that makes sense, like dealing in cliches yeah. and stuff. It instead d deals with spy stuff in like an extremely almost too realistic matter, and what ends up happening in in the film is that you can see that like intelligence agencies barely know what the fuck they're doing, and uh, and everybody's confused and nobody has a good handle on what's happening and stuff like that, and people are just like double crossing and being secretive for basically no reason, and um. I kind of got that impression almost in this movie, like yeah, like that's people I think just that's doing really what they what think is right. Yeah, like, that's what it's setting out to do is paint that picture of the the realities of this sort of secret police political drama sort of thing. Like a lot of the people in charge don't really care about the people on the ground. Like nobody really cares about the outcome as long as it makes them look good. Well, I, I guess, um, like, even though that Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy is pretty similar to this, at least in, uh, like, politically, um, like, that movie still has much more interesting characters. Like, it has a, a bunch of different archetypical sort of spy-type characters. So, you know, you've got the, uh, the guy who's really ambitious, and you've got the, like, the old-school spy who's just trying to do the right thing, that sort of stuff, and... And the movie's all about how, uh, you know, this idiotic spy stuff is, is affecting these people. And I just, like, if, if you want a really interesting version of this sort of story, that uh, then Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy is probably a, a better alternative. Now, what I'm curious about is I kind of want to see more about, like, the, uh, if, with the technological development of the society, like... What do they do? They have anything interesting besides the suits? Like, what what's their space program like? 
I really, really want to see what happens between this movie and the first Killzone game because I'm not seeing how those two things like mesh together. So I, there's got to be some kind of interesting story in there. Well, the Wolf um, Brigade, they become the whole guest and uh, they go they to go space. Into, they go into space and then come back and then they're aliens. And the Nazis, I think. Yeah. And they become space Nazis. And then mm -hmm. the good guys genocide them. Mm -hmm. And then share the planet you know. with them. I played that game. That one was a bad Have one. I ever talked about how, like, incredibly, infuriatingly stupid Killzone is? No. I've never played them because I always thought the concept behind them was so incredibly stupid that I'm like, I don't want to play this. This is dumb. Well, so I've played uh, all three of the games, but I played the first game for like 10 minutes, and it is one of the worst shooters I've ever played. Um, and then uh, two, it just felt like shit to play. Like they had had the worst controls and nothing ha like interesting happens and stuff. Then the third game is the only one I've actually finished. And uh, cause the, con the controls felt much better and it was a very pretty game and... You know, the story sucks and stuff, but it ends with the, you know, the so-called good guys genociding an entire planet, basically. Like, well, they're the bad guys. But, but don't worry, in, in the next game, the good guys split their planet in half, and half is the ghetto side, and they give the people they genocided the ghetto side of the planet. Like, why would you do that? Why would... It just... Good God... It's like white colonialism, the series or something. It's fucking terrible. Shadowfall's a really bad game. It's very pretty. Yeah. And the gun plays whatever, but everything else inside there is god awful. Yeah. Fuck those games. There's one sort of decent entry in the series that ends with a literal genocide. Apparently the Vita one plays well, but it's on the Vita, so... Oh, it doesn't. I have I bought that game for like five bucks or something when it was on sale. It's a terrible game. Okay. I don't know. I haven't played it. I got it on PS Plus Fuck and it. I haven't installed it. Oh, and it has even worse storytelling than the uh, the other games. Yeesh. I just, I just know that Killzone totally ripped this, this, this series off. Like, come Wait, on. Wait, it's not a totally direct ripped. continuation? No. They're completely unrelated. Oh. oh, I'm really confused now. I thought you were joking. We were? That, yeah. Good job. That was the joke? Good job. Nah. Well, see, it's the entire reason I picked this movie. <laughs> I saw the uh, the front cover and I'm like, wait, that's the Killzone guy. I just remember watching this movie a long time ago and thinking, that's all right. Yeah. Like, I like 10 the... years later, my opinion is, ass, all right. The animation's okay. I thought the well, animation, not okay. the animation's thought the really, good. really good. How about that scene where he's just walking down the hallway shooting everybody and all the bullets and stuff are pinging off his armor? That's pretty cool. If if that scene was staged more interestingly, I might I might agree, but, you know, a guy slowly walking down a hallway and uh, like shooting it. people. I like it. It's different. I, I, I like it. Something right out of a triple A video game. Yep. Nah, not enough like waist high boxes. The uh the parallels to kill zone just, just keep coming. <laughs> anyway. Well that's that's what you do is you rip off a well established, you know, Japanese product and make an inferior either movie or video game and then move on to the next one. Yep, it's like that. It's like that one movie, Stealth. That's just totally Macross Plus, but shit. Well, I, I don't know what either of those things are. I know what one of those things are. I'll let you figure out which. It's probably not Stealth. I can tell you that much. <laughs> I I uh, I watched Ant Man. The Marvel movie. That's, that's a good movie. 
Yeah, I like I liked Ant Man a lot more than I liked Jinro the Wolf Brigade. Have we done Marvel talk at all in this podcast series? Uh, I brought it up during. Is it Summer Wars? Maybe I don't one know. of them. We were talking about Marvel movies. I said Iron Man a whole bunch. Oh yeah, right. I think as an interesting sort of uh, side note that um, you, you know, when it when it comes to stuff like this, you know, this is a an original story, and it's and it's you know framed interestingly, um, and maybe doesn't. It isn't executed uh, well I, enough for me to to really like it, but I think part like, of the problem is that these kinds of movies have gotten a lot better since you know 1999 when this movie came out. Like it's very much a product of its time. It's slow. It's moody. Not a lot happens in it. It's just it's a moody. It's a moody movie. I wonder where that Mikey guy went. Like, we just did a whole podcast without Mikey. He felt like he just he disappeared. Said like, he said, like, two things at the beginning. It was like, eh, this movie's all right. And then he just, like, went and took a nap. You guys talked about a bunch of stuff I have nothing to say about. Whoa, who's this guy? Well, you could say, you could talk about things you do have an interest in. I'm not going to stop you. Uh, we're already like, at an well, hour, though. Like, so. There we got, we got, like, Two minutes. What what you been doing, Mikey? What you been up to? Hey man, like twenty minutes of this is gonna get cut. Yeah, so we'll be fine. Uh, what you been up to? Not a lot. I've been playing Hitman. Hitman's a good game. It's a good game. I like it a lot. I know. What about those movies? What movies? That what if Hitman was good movies? They the Hitman movies. They didn't make. They Hitman made a new movies. one like last year. They didn't do that. And it was terrible. They did. I never they saw. They totally it. did. I they didn't do it. that. They I mean, totally they did. did. You're making stuff up. Stop lying. I wish. When's no, the uh, the Game what Kiwi the podcast going to start? The what? What if Hitman was an alien? The what When's podcast? the Game Kiwi podcast going to start? About games. Like, you're called Game Kiwi, and, and the only podcast you have is about anime. It's like, why? Well, to be fair, we also have the anime podcast that has like three episodes and then like five episodes of <laughs> specials. I think quote, these unquote. shouldn't be called specials anymore. <laughs> they should just be anime kiwi. There's... That's what I've been saying for like each one of these episodes, but I thought the joke was getting old, so I stopped. They're specials because they're standalone. Are you saying I'm special? In a, in a sense. In a, in a sense, that's not very definitive. Yeah, like like a corrective shoe kind of stuff. No, do you want Anime Kiwi Definitive Edition? Director's yes, I do. Cut. The Ultimate Box. Game of the Year Edition. Game of the Year. I want Anime Cin- Kiwi with edition. slightly sharper textures. Yeah, HD Cat, remake. You, you heard it here. Cat Daughter wants Anime Game of the Year. What? Uh, Naruto Ultimate Hero Ninja Storm 4 Storm. It's my anime game of the year. I, I sat the through the I ending played. of that game. Uh, I sat oh, through the ending so of that game. Oh, that and game's so I wanted, good. You just... I wanted to die. Oh, it was man, one of the worst things to... I've ever seen. Cyber if people Connect like that, to make more if people like that, games. I hate them. Oh. Do, 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 did you like the end of that game? Because What do you mean no. the end of the game? The, like... the, it was one of the, like, the most... like stereotypically negative sort of anime experiences that I've ever had. What? Like, in the sense that uh, it seemed to me like to deal in a lot of cliches, and I was like... Well, yeah, like it's this. Naruto. It's all cliches. What are you talking about? He defeats the bad guy with the power of friendship. Yes. That's not the ending of the game. The ending of the game is they fucking punch the shit out of each other in a river. Yeah, and at one point he's in the river and the power of friendship lifts him out of the river. Yeah, but that's not the ending. That's before the ending. Well, yeah. And then, like, I think it might have been either the last podcast or the one before where I talked about, we were talking about Naruto and I kind of came up with, like, a fake ending in my head of what it would be like. 
and it turned out to be exactly right. Yeah, I, you know what that's going to happen going in. I haven't even seen that much anime. It's a good sign, right? Hey, Mikey, yeah. you're still alive? Yeah, but anyway, that's this episode of what Anime Kiwi. Next week? Uh, next week, it sounds like AP is back yet. and around, so let's oh, is get he? back Let's get back to uh, slogging through Legend of Galactic Heroes. <laughs> get that first maybe, season finished maybe, with. Maybe the next podcast will have Mikey CP in it. He might actually turn up. It was on hiatus. But we'll... I'm going to say we'll be back with that next week. There's what, probably like th- three episodes of that left, of that podcast? Uh, I, uh, I think we were on episode 16? Yeah. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Three episodes. Yeah. Three episodes. Anyway, next week, uh, plan is to continue back with Legend of Galactic Heroes. If something comes up again, we will be going to Princess Mononoke because Cat Dodor has somehow managed to not see that movie. That movie's fucked up. People I've managed fucked to up see in that movie. The movie's rad managed as hell. Managed to not see a lot of stuff. Uh, There's some fucking up happening in that movie. Anyway, a couple other things that are undetermined times in the pipeline. Uh, me, Cat Dodor, and. Mary Kish are at some point in the future planning to watch all of Satoshi Khan's movies and do a podcast about those. Uh, no date for that's that yet. Long. That's going to be a long podcast. Yeah, it's probably going to be about two hours. Uh, and I've already watched all that stuff, so yeah, it'll, it'll be me re-watching. Yeah. And I, uh, I also watched all of um, Paranoia Agent, too. Good. Uh, and then and it's another unidentified point in the future... Cat Doter, me, and Rudy from Horror Kiwi will be watching uh, Hirokazu Koreeda's Still Walking and Afterlife. And that'll be, those will both be movie Kiwi podcasts. Um, aside from those projects. Which I've also already seen. Yep, you really need to stop watching the stuff till we have a date hammered out. Uh, if you want to. Uh, like get in touch with us or you know interact with us at all uh leave a comment on the youtube version of this also like and subscribe to the youtube channel while you're there uh, you can reach us at facebook.com slash the game kiwi uh i'm on twitter.com slash the game kiwi like all the time you can't reach me though i'm an internet ghost you can comment on on the podcasts and everything and i will never read it oh that i'll read that's that's why they contact you, because I'll read it out loud on the podcast to you. Yeah, Mikey will read it, and then he'll tell you. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna set up an email for podcast stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, do all those things. There's probably some I'm forgetting now, but whatever. I'll get to them next time. Oh, that's, oh, uh, whatever. I'll just do that later. What? We didn't do our numerical things. We'll do that in the live commentary, just out of nowhere, nonsense. Ah, whatever. 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 I said it's I, good. I give it a four out of ten. I, I said it's good. I give it a five. I said it's good out of ten. I'll go with so whatever, seven. I'll go with whatever my anime list says good is. Yeah, sure. Seven, eight. Nah, maybe seven. It's a good. It's a good seven. It's an earned seven. <laughs> it's a, it's a video game review seven. Polygon, no. or Giant that would Bomb, be like or GameSpot, the, the most garbage. No, no, man, IGN. Seven out of ten, IGN. Anyways, I'm Mike. Ah, whatever. I'm Fusei, the most boring man in the world. This has been Anime Kiwi. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep it anime. <laughs> <laughs>